Coming up next, Frank and Mary here in Framingham um, with your co-hosts, uh, Grace O'Donnell and me, Art Bergeron. Our guest today is Anne Roberti, uh, Director of Community Education and Lifelong Learning at Framingham State University. Stay tuned. Welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services at the Callahan Center. Uh, and I'm Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, but this is not about my day job. Uh, this is about my friends, Frank and Mary. Whenever I do seminars or presentations, I talk about them and their goal in life, which is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that reminds you of what you want to be doing, this is the show for you. So the point of this show is to is to introduce you to the people that you need to know and the programs you need to know about in order to stay right here in Framingham for the rest of your life. My terrific co-host, Grace O'Donnell, who seems to know everybody in Framingham, is in charge of always finding these great guests. Grace, whom do we have today? Arthur, today we have Anne Roberti. She's the Director of Community Education and Lifelong Learning at Framingham State University. She'll tell us about the courses taught by FSU faculty for people 60 and older. That's in the Adventures in Lifelong Learning program. It's a collaboration between Framingham State and Framingham Public Library. Welcome, Anne. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here today, and I want to talk to you about our life learning, um, lifelong learning program. Um, and I'm going to share my slides right now. I'd like to start off by acknowledging the Framingham Public Library. Um, we have two lifelong learning programs that we established in 2011. So we have over a decade of our collaboration with the Framingham Public Library. One's called Adventures in Lifelong Learning, which I really am here to talk about today. And the second one is called the Lifelong Learning Lecture Series. So I'll, I'll just give you a brief description about both in case you haven't learned about them before. Um, they're both programs geared towards adult age 60 and over. Um, we want to have spaces for adults at this age in this age group that where they can share information, be creative, socially interact, pursue their intellectual um, interests with peers their same age. Um, the Adventures in Lifelong Learning program is offered three times per year, once in October and November, a second time in January, that's called our John L. Heinemann Intercession, and then finally in April and May. Um, in the fall and spring terms, um, they're offered on four Tuesdays, and they start at nine in the morning and then classes end at about 2.45 or three in the afternoon. And people can take more than one class, take um, just one class, follow whatever interest they have. Um, and then in January in our John L. Heinemann intercession, that's sort of a focus study. We, we actually take a look at um, uh, almost a, a century's worth of work. It could, I think we started the Victorian era, era at the last um, intercession. We're going to continue with that in our upcoming intercession in January. And that we take a look at the music, the literature, the history, um, and um, any other information, art history um, of a particular, particular era. I think what's important about the program is that you know it's taught by um, often by FSU professors or Professor Merida, Meritas, um, and and often other experts in their fields. Um, we have a planning committee. The planning committee is composed of adults age 60 and over um, who have participated in our program. It's really important for us to have opportunities for leadership um, for our participants. Um, and we meet two or three times a year to go over course evaluation, program evaluations, um, and really um, decide on what kind of programming we want to offer in the upcoming um, sessions that we have. 
we've very much taken into consideration our participants' feedback on what they've studied with us, and we try to find instructors and courses that meet their needs. Um, and for the past three years, we've had a Title III B grant funded through Baypath Elder Services, Inc., and that actually helped us establish an outreach coordinator position. So many of you may know Maureen DeYoung. Um, she does outreach to everyone in our, our Metro West area um, with a focus on underrepresented communities. So in the past year, we, we started groundwork for um, conducting outreach to the Portuguese-speaking um, adults above age 60, and we're hoping to continue that in the upcoming year, as well as perhaps um, do some more um, outreach to Spanish-speaking elders in the area. It's important because following English, Spanish, and Portuguese are the two largest language groups in the Metro West area. Yeah. Um, but um, Maureen is a friendly face, and she's someone that goes throughout the community um, talking about our program, distributing flyers, and then answering any questions. Um, we also, I will also want to acknowledge that we uh, very often receive partial funding through for the program through Massachusetts Cultural Councils. Um, and in the past year, we received a Cultural Council grant through Framingham and also through Marlboro. And one big perk is um, of this for, uh, is that recently in June, one of our instructors, a Framingham State University associate professor, David Smales, received a special recognition award from the Framingham Cultural Council because of the, um, the work that he does in Adventures in Lifelong Learning. Um, he's pretty well known now, I think, among our participants. And we bring in new participants who are particularly interested in taking his course in political science. Usually it has to do with the president and the other branches of government. Very popular course, and he's a, a dedicated um, instructor in the program. So along with that, there are also lifelong learning lecture series that are offered through the Framingham Public Library, typically on Thursday evenings. Um, they're free. Um, and very often there are nine lectures offered in this fall and nine lectures offered in the spring. The person who coordinates that is the head of outreach and community experience at the Framingham Public Library, Lara Villahomet. Um, and she um, has been delivering most of them recently through Zoom. Um, and I'm not sure if that's going to continue. I can tell you our Adventures in Lifelong Learning program is going to continue to be offered remotely via Zoom. But you need to check in with the Framingham Public Library about the lecture series. And that's sponsored through the Joseph L. and Ray L. Freund Foundation. Now I'm just going to um, focus a little bit more on our upcoming um, fall session. It's going to be on four Tuesdays, October 11th, October 18th, October 25th, and November 1st. Registration opens on September 6th, 2022 at 11 a.m. So I hope you're all registering. Um, and we keep it open pretty much through the um, first day of classes or probably the day before the first day of classes. And, and that um, registration, is is it all done electronically or is it is there a phone number that people can call? Or maybe you're going to get to that. I was just, I was just curious. <laughs> It's all done electronically through our website, but we also post on the website phone numbers to call. So if someone doesn't feel particularly, you know, inclined to doing the registration themselves through online per means, we'll help. Um, and very often it's Maureen that's, that's doing the helping to register people. Um, and there's also a link on the Framingham Public Library website where people can um, connect and, and register. Mm -hmm. So we try to, you know, in as many ways as we can assist people to, to register. And, and we often have copies of your brochures for the Adventures in Lifelong Learning right here at the Callahan Center. So if people are not so computer literate, they can always just pick up one of the flyers here and give Maureen a call for that assistance. Absolutely. And we do have... Um, we do have an email address that's lifelonglearning at framinghamstate.edu. Um, and they can, anyone can email us at that address for assistance as well. Okay. So for the upcoming fall session, um, we have five courses we're offering. Um, 
And I'll just go through them because some exciting um, people are teaching them and I'd like to tell you a little bit more about them. Um, King Lear, Bound Upon a Wheel of Fire. Um, Helen Heinemann, Dr. Heinemann is a professor, uh, the president emerita at FSU and a very popular instructor in our program. She, teach, she usually teaches literature, drama, and poetry um, in every session. As I mentioned before, our intercession is the John L. Heinemann intercession. That intercession is named after her husband because they collaborated for many years um, in, in bringing the intercession to us. As I said, it's a focused study within a, a specific period of time um, in literature, music, history, art, history, what have you. So this um, session, um, Dr. Heinemann is going to be teaching King Lear, Shakespeare's King Lear. That was a request from um, many, many of our participants. They wanted to have um, a course on one of Shakespeare's comedies or tragedies. And this is a very big tragedy um, that I think the participants will be excited to be um, studying. Uh, uh, the second course that's being offered is the History of Jazz, Part 1. That's being delivered by Paul Buono, who's director of the Jazz Ensemble at Assumption University. Um, music is a love of many of our participants. So we always try to include music um, and or art or art history in um, each of our sessions. And so jazz has been, a our participants have been requesting jazz for quite some time. So I'm glad that this is coming to us this fall. Um, and Paul is a wonderful instructor. Um, speaking of Russia is a, his, a Russian history course. And I think it's very apropos given, you know, a lot of questions that people have about Russian history with what's going on in the world. Um, so we're delivering this course. That's by Nick Crescetes. He is a professor emeritus at Framingham State University. Um, so he retired a few years ago. One thing I should say, again, with um, Dr. Heinemann and Dr. Rochettes, is that um, we like to have instructors whenever we can who are over the age of 60. Um, it's important to us. That's another opportunity for leadership in, in the community. Um, so we're glad to have him back. He taught for the very first time in our Adventures program in um, January 2022. And we're so pleased to have him back this fall. And he'll be back again in January 2023. Um, now, um, Dr. Larry McKenna is an, a Framingham State University professor, and he's going to be talking about the search for life across the universe. Um, our planning committee was very excited to have this course description. So he's going to document um, you know, what's being done and what research is being done to see about life in other places other than the than Earth. Um, very, again, a very engaging instructor, has taught in the program multiple times and always has new and innovative ways of teaching us scientific topics. And I can't help but interject, <laughs> how many Trekkies do you think will show up for that particular <laughs> program? <laughs> I think that's a great question, Grace. I think I'll poll them. As we use Zoom, I will do a poll and I will get back to you on that. But I think Trekkies would love this. And know, even yeah. those that are in, interested in the scientific, you know, the more scientific um, aspects of looking for life across the universe, Dr. McKenna has a great ability to really appeal to multiple interests. So, you know, I think it, I think it's it's something that, you know, Trekkies should join us for. That's very amusing because, of course, for our generation, Star Trek is how we how we kind of conceive of most aliens, right? We're Star Trek, <laughs> right? We saw, yeah. we actually saw them, right? On Star Trek, it's, okay. it's true. It's true. And in then black finally, and white, in black and white, actually. Right? It is. Yeah, that is true. Um, and then finally, we have, as I mentioned, um, Dr. David Smales, who is acting chair of political science law and political studies at FSU and an associate prep professor um, he's he's the instructor I mentioned that had just um, gotten a, an, an award from the Framingham Cultural Council for his work. He, again, because our participants asked for it, he's going to talk about the relationship between the president and the media, friend or foe, the president and the media. 
And one aspect of his teaching that is, I, I think is very important to highlight, he treats all, um, all political discussions fairly. You never know where he's coming from, you know, what position he's taking. He really gives a broad view of what's going on um, in terms of the work that he, he does in research and that he teaches about. That's so refreshing. He- that's refreshing to hear that, Anne, in these days where things are so polarized that there can be someone who can just genuinely see both sides of the aisle and simply uh, talk about it uh, dispassionately one way or the other. That's terrific to know that. Absolutely, Grace. Yes, that, that's, it's, it's a skill and a, and a gift of his to mm-hmm. be able to do that. And I think that's why his classes. We often have waiting lists and then we figure out ways to include people because it's classes um, have over a hundred participants. So I think that's all. If you have any, any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer some. Um, so a, 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 tri- a trivia question that came up, I guess there are a couple of one just with, that went to that with that last point about the number of participants. So are these, these are all through Zoom. So is the is the protocol that you just go into a waiting room and then you kind of uh, you get admitted and and do you have the ability to raise your hand or ask a question? And, you know, how does all of that? How does all that w- just work? So everything's delivered through Zoom. Um, and, and sometimes we have webinars. I know Dr. Rochetti's we have we have we have um, webinar a webinar function, but um, our participants are able to ask questions. Um, it depends on the instructor. Sometimes an instructor will say, come on and ask me questions throughout. Put it in the chat or raise your hand. And they, they use that function. Some will say, I want to save everything till the end. And I'm going to give you 15 to 20 minutes at the end and you can answer. And then other instructors have breakout rooms, um, you know, and, and, and facilitate the breakout rooms very well. Um, it all depends on their own style and what they're comfortable with. But um, part of our mission is for social engagement. So it is important to us that people aren't just passively listening, that they have the opportunity, if they want, um, to ask questions and make comments. That doesn't mean if they don't want to participate, they also can remain quiet. So it's their choice. Yeah. Right. That's, great. that's great. And, and just the, tri- the the trivia one was so. How do you do Zoom? How do you do music on Zoom? I'm trying to. I'm try- I was trying to imagine that, right? So that's when we use the webinar feature. The webinar feature is great, and then I can I can queue up. We can have things queued up in a slideshow, and 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 then um, you know just click on it, and it's it's done beautifully. I see. It's really done beautifully. And then I think for the history of jazz, um, the course that we're going to be offering in the fall, he's actually going to do live music as well. He has a keyboard. Right. Um, so we have had um, instructors who taught music or uh, music topics in the past, and they've used their own instruments as well. It can be done. And I understand there are some other opportunities at FSU for people 60 and older to take some courses. Can you give us a little more information about that? Absolutely. So so, um, I work within the Division of um, Continuing Education and Graduate Studies. Um, And our Continuing Education program um, offers um, a discount for people age 60 and above. So there's a tuition waiver. Um, so people don't have to pay tuition, but they would have to pay the fee that's associated with registration. But the tuition is waived, so that it's a it, it, nice discount. Um, and then also, we have graduate programs. So anyone who's looking for a career change, and sometimes people are at 60, um, there are a variety of graduate programs that are being delivered. And they're all being, I think most of them are be, being delivered either in hybrid fo- format or um, online. Um, so it's very convenient for people in their schedules. And then finally, I, in my other hat that I wear at the university, I oversee the community English language program. And we often have um, students who are age 60 and over recent um, refugees or immigrants here. So there are opportunities um, for them to study there. There are a lot of opportunities at the university. And then um, I think 
as well, we have an arts and ideas series that is open to the public. Um, I often um, send out information on the arts and ideas series to our adventures participants. So they're, they're aware that they can, you know, either come to campus for an event could be like someone um, with a poetry reading, or it could be that there's something that's happening on zoom. Great. Can you tell me, Anne, with the adventures and lifelong learning series, do people sign up for each of the programs within a given time period. So if I sign up for that October grouping, am I expected to attend each of those sessions? No, so so that's a great question. So there are five courses that are being offered. Um, and then tip, in the morning, we have two courses offered from um, nine o'clock to 10.30. And then there's a little bit of a break. And then from 10, 45 to 12, 15, there are two more courses offered. And then in the afternoon, we have Dr. Smales's course, and that's from 115 to 245. Um, so you can sign up for just one course if you want. If you want to sign up for three courses, you can. It would be hard to sign up for the five because you'd have to be jumping. <laughs> Right. have to be jumping between the two in the morning. Split so screen, typically as screen. many as three. Yeah. And sometimes people sign up based on when they're available. They may have something to do in the morning, but they're available in the afternoon or some, it depends on their preference. And uh, one aspect of our program that I really love is that we have brown bag lunch sessions um, and that's during the break time. And we've invited Grace and Grace yeah. has been <laughs> who's presented on her programming um, at the Callahan Center, um, which is wonderful. But at that time, we try to bring in social service agencies Mm -hmm. um, that have um, that that have services that meet the needs of adults age 60 and over. um, And it's been wonderful. So those are quite diverse. We haven't quite decided yet who's coming in the fall. So I can't tell you that, but look for upcoming advertising. (laughs) We appreciate that you spread that word because what we find is a lot of people don't realize there are resources for them when they are 60 and older. People have this notion that I need to figure it out all by myself. And every community has a council on aging department. And we all have various ways that we can assist people, either those who are already 60 themselves or the younger adult children of those people to let them know there are other things that we can guide you with, that you don't have to try to reinvent the wheel, that we can provide assistance. So we appreciate that partnership that you have for all of the agencies that exist to help seniors. It's terrific. I think it's so important. Um, It's something that we decided we really needed um, um, when we first started delivering our courses remotely at the beginning of the pandemic. And we want to continue doing it. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, if if any of our participants, for whatever reason, can't attend a session, Maureen DeYoung, our outreach coordinator, makes sure that everyone receives any handouts or flyers from these places so that they at least have the contact information they need if they want to follow up on their own. Yeah. Actually, yeah, that was that related to a question. So so do do the classes have written material attached to them? Uh, Sometimes, and, and- yes. I see, and, and 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 hopefully no no tests. I don't want any tests anymore, right? I'm done. I'm done. I'm so done with tests. Yeah, I don't think we've had no tests. No tests, right? Sometimes um, and, a little homework, like yeah. um, Dr. Heinemann's course. Um, it, you know, you have to read King right. Lear so that you can follow through, and she right. gives assignments each week, and she'll tell you that you have to read, but she doesn't test you when you're in the course. Um, and other courses, it depends on the instructor, if they have readings. I know um, for the Russian history course, we're going to have like a, a list of readings that people can read if they're interested and they don't have to. It all depends. So Maureen, are there any other things that we haven't had a chance to touch on yet that you would like to make sure that people know about the Avengers and Lifelong Learning Program or any of the other programs that you're in charge of there at FSU? I just want to say that, oh, I probably didn't say that the courses are delivered free of charge in the Adventures in Lifelong Learning or for a voluntary donation. We also look for um, donations and sponsorships, Um, but um, we don't want to have the cost of of 
of the courses be something that prohibits people from joining. Yeah. Um, so we offer we offer the courses, and um, I think that's important for people to know. Um, and again, you can um, if if you're quiet and you just want to be in class and listen, you can do that. If you want to be more active and ask questions and and you make comments, you have that option as well. I think we just want to be welcoming and embracing everyone. That's it's just incredible that, you know, I guess I really, Grace, you know, when you were you invited in, I hadn't kind of thought about it because you always think of, you think of the universities as catering to the young, you know, you think about kids going through school and they're getting their education, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I remember my, my wife actually got her teacher, her teaching certificate from, from Framingham state after she graduated college and stuff. And she, and, you know, and she'd come home and say, oh my God, I'm three times older than the next youngest student you know so you think of it as being the young but it's such an incredible resource for us right for, for you know not you young people but for us like you know significantly you know it, for folks who just loved education and I, I remember I just loved college for that reason for the courses that you never kind of you know they weren't part of your the the specific thing for your career but it was just really interesting and so to be able to just kind of look around, at, at a variety, and you've got a real variety, you know, you've, you obviously you've got a literature course, you've got a poli sci course, you've got a, it's, it's, so you can see where the planning has really been well thought out, right, which is pretty wonderful. Yeah. So I, I, and I, you know, I, once again, I can't, I can't thank you enough for kind of doing this, um, and, and, and Grace, and of course, Grace is always kind of the initiator of so much of this stuff, right, Grace is like, U ubiquitous, which is why she keeps finding these, <laughs> these like these terrific, these terrific guests. Well, we love to shine a spotlight on people who deserve to be recognized for what they're offering to the senior community. And, and the notion that they're doing it in conjunction with the library. Yeah. So you're also you've yeah. also got that participation from it is also a really, really dynamic group. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it's really important for us to have yeah. this community collaboration among different groups. Right. Right. With the support of, of elder services, you know, with the support of the regional, it, it's great that the regional organization also understands this is a crucial piece of 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 of, of aging. Right. Yeah. Is a, aging with grace, but aging, expanding your learning. So anyway, Grace, thank you so, so much. And thank you so much, Grace, for doing this, folks. This is a great opportunity. Very good price. A lot of fun. Um, hope you participate, and I hope that you'll join us on the next presentation of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.